It's been forever, hasn't it? So much has happened since I've seen you guys last. I mean, you both know the grass has been green on my side for a while. I've always just wanted others to bask under the sprinklers with me. So several years back, I began to seek high and low for children in need of a home. And I brought them in. Express my affection without question. Spill relentless compassion permanently against them as unapologetic as tattoo ink pressed and etched into fresh skin. I lived to bless them. But tone deaf eyes set their gaze upon the harmony in this haven. They assume one stranger stormed in, it'd be hard to get rid of the colors once the rain cleared. So they conspired to chase the air from my home, knowing that if they move quickly enough, I'd never be able to catch my breath. But thank God I reminded my children often, no matter what happens, I have good friends that I trust. And when you reach out to them, they'll look after you. They'll love you like I do. And don't worry, you'll know exactly how to find them. Without warning, I was accused of running a shelter in my residence. While handcuffed by lies, my heartbeats were left unattended. And swiftly sinister social services staff slithered in to snatch and scatter my seed to satisfy a set of separatists who sought to soundproof themselves from the song of a sickness that I called family. When I returned, they were gone. Shipped back to where strangers assumed they belonged. One of my daughters was sent to Kenya, a place where the family so underprivileged for them, touching poverty would have felt like paradise. And one day, she arranged her tears into sentences, folded and stuffed them into envelope and trusted hope to deliver it to the doorstep of the one place she was certain a heart lived, praying for a life raft to float back by mail. Days of silence haunted her. And one day, this young child in the state saw that letter arrive, and curiously unraveled its contents. He began to read, and with every line he broke, but he continued as if he were digging, as if he were unmuffling the desperate pleas of a child buried alive between the lines of a piece of paper. It spoke of overhearing her caretakers making arrangements. It sounded as if they were planning to send her away to bring in extra wages, like a, a transaction where they would trade her for some type of minimal payment. He raced to his parents, convinced that true lifeguards would dive towards the deepest end to rescue the drowning. He told them the story and cried. There must be something we could do. There's no way this kid's life's worth less than a pair of shoes, they told him. We have bills. We're saving for your college tuition too. There's no way we can take care of her and provide for you. My other son was tossed right into the foster system's web. Waiting for virtue to be leached from his bones, he watched in frustration as other children found refuge in the arms of adoption. But he remembered how I fed him scriptures. Solid word his taste buds craved, but jaws weren't strong enough to chew yet. So he settled for lies. Scraps littered from the mouths of malnourished boys living off the cold leftovers of broken families. He feasted on petty crime. Perhaps he felt the law seemed like the only ones willing to show him that he belonged somewhere. Child services moved him around like side dishes over dinner tables he tasted. So many places but never full. The at home digested countless pieces of the map yet was starving for direction. He was lost until he was found by someone who reminded him of the hope he caught a glimpse of years before. This young man told him he had parents that could help, who nailed their lifestyles to the cross, 
couldn't dust the heaven off their souls. See, they were known to stroll with God. So it all made perfect sense that they could guide him with his walk. But they were blindfolded by bias. Couldn't see promise peeking from behind his rugged demeanor. Couldn't love beyond his tats. But how could your light make one switch when two turned off by the darkness of their past? He said, hey, do you mind sitting in the back? My parents have reputation at the forefront of their mind, and this place is like home for them. I mean, you know what that's like, right? I thought things would be different for my oldest. But even though he was afforded all the comforts of life, you can't credit cars to solve inner needs that have been declined. When a child's pain reaches its limit, you should never let that slide. Throat, gripped by condemnation, battling demons guilt told him he was born with. When you spend your life hurting, fading into numbness sounds like a dream you die to never wake from. The son told his dad, Hey, yo, this guy's in pieces. God could use us to unshatter him. And his new dawn's worth our bruised palms. Isn't that what Christ would say? His dad said, there are groups that rally around people like him. We don't have to get in the way. And that group did rally around him with the body bag and caution tape. And then, and then it happened. Gravity waved its white flag and he fell, helplessly in love. She was perfection plucked from the galaxies. And if God took his time and sat a light in his solar system, then of course he could lead this man to find himself in her space. And although they loved each other to the moon and back, some things never allowed her to forget that she was an alien. His parents were adamant, saying culture infuses, culture abuse. You look foolish, like a heretic, bringing home a woman who lives like a Christian but dresses like a terrorist. Have you thought about our grandkids? How they'll be swallowed whole by confusion? You had so many options, son. We could have helped you choose one. What she know about being raised under the umbrella of Negro spirituals, protecting dark skin from being burned by the light ones? You're not just dating this girl. You're binding our family to a breed of wolves ravenous, and you connect it without our protection. So like an abortion, we ain't having it. We, we had no idea. Oh, you knew exactly what you were doing. I trusted you. I could have swore on my life that my friends would share my heart. And when my children were in need, they care enough to play their part. This isn't fair. If we knew they were yours, we would have held them precious. You broke them reckless. But I blame myself. I led them to believe that this was a safe place. But to protect your own treasures, even places that were once safe can lock up and turn cold on you. Just because I've known you all my life doesn't mean that we're the same. You don't even know who you are, but you wear Christian as your name. But you, you are logic filled with knowledge. You use reason to relate, analyze within your flesh, never making room for faith. And you, you are fear, fueled by doubt. When you thrive, you make it hard for love to breathe. So scared of outcomes, you can't come out. Made me believe and make believe, but your son, your son is the nudge towards every godly endeavor. A voice, still and small, only listeners can detect. Pure and simple, still and small, often easy to reject. A 
finally recognize the roles that each of you have played in my life. You are the opposing teams that rival within me. Logic and fear. You stand guard to defend against every drive my spirit has towards goals above the rim of my understanding. And I'm terrified of the glaring call of the one with the stripes who whistles men out of the bounds of their comfort. Cause when the ball is in my court, I'd rather die than give up a possession or my time or me. See, all my life, I just wanted to get to a point where I love to live. But God has been saying you will live to love. And I still hear his whisper, giving pep talks to my heart, daring me to abandon myself for journeys that look more like mountains than missions. This voice, typhoons from the deep, swallowing the personal agendas of the ones he called into the eye of his brainstorm. And he, he, for some strange reason, called me. So like Moses, can't be comfortable in my palace while my people perish in bondage. The flesh says what they're facing isn't greater than my excuses, but the spirit says I love them too much to not journey with them through it. I refuse. I refuse to exalt my convenience over their deliverance. Because my savior cried nevertheless, not my will for me. So empty me. And I'm saying cause I got it like that. I'm saying cause my God is like that. And today, today he is here. Saying come forth to every Lazarus wrapped in the grave clothes of, I can't right now. And to every sleeping girl he's evicting the doubt from your room saying rise. Talitha Kumi, this voice is commanding us to war for the weak, speak for the silence, reach for the needy, and love who the world has convinced us was unlovable. And when we, when we allow his selfless voice to quake, men will have no choice but to look love square in the eye and surrender to his rumble. And I still hear him asking. If I were naked, would you cover me? If I was hungry and thirsty, would you feed me? If I was sick and in prison, would you come see me? If I were a stranger, would you embrace me? And you who do right will probably ask, exactly Lord, how will we ever meet? Then you would hear, truly I say unto you, if you do it for one of the least of these, you have also done it for me. God's heart for the broken bleeds through us. We have proof, purpose. Its presence is in your future if you can see past you. I said its presence is in your future if you could see past you. Many are called, but we are chosen given us work to do and his voice of compassion is still calling but if no one answers you'll realize there's never been anyone else at the table to blame but you you